Am I the butthole for preventing my neighbor from getting high-speed internet? Wow did this take off. Thank you all so much for the awards and your input. TLDR. Neighbor wouldn't help me get internet years ago, now that I put a ton of work into getting it installed, he wants to piggyback off my work so he can have it too. I'm not preventing him from getting cable, I'm just not letting him use my lines. On to the story. So I recently got high-speed internet to my house after not having it for nearly a decade. I live in an area that has multiple options for broadband, but my house sits back about a mile off the public road, so most utilities need to be hard-lined to work. Despite living on a large piece of property, my one, and only neighbor, is about 800 feet away from, due to the original owners being family members and wanting their homes to be semi-close. We get along, but don't interact much. They have done some things that I consider rude, but they seem like generally okay people. When I first moved in, I worked a deal out with our local internet provider to run a main line to my home, if I could get the neighbor to sign up as well. Reason for that, is they allow a certain allowance per customer for construction costs, and with two of us, the total was high enough to cover everything. Now there is no contract, so they could cancel after the first month, and I offered to pay for their services for the first three months as a thank you. They declined and said they were happy with DSL. I explained they didn't have to get rid of anything, I just needed them to allow the line to be ran underground, and sign on for a month minimum, and I'd cover it. Still no. We planned on buying a new house eventually so I never had it installed, as I didn't want to pay. With everything going on, and working from home, I finally worked a deal out, that if I did some of the construction, they would cover any extra cost for the installation. Now my neighbor sees what's going on, and comes to ask about our new internet provider. I explained what I had to go through and that he could do the same if he wanted. Next thing I know, an installer is knocking on my door letting me know he's going to lay cable across my driveway temporarily, and that they'll need to dig it up to go across permanently. I asked what he was talking about, and he said he was installing cable for the neighbor. I said no you're not, not from my property anyway. Now the neighbor is begging me to give them an easement for his cable drop. I said no for two reasons. 1. You screwed me years ago when I wanted cable originally, 2. I really don't want them digging into the driveway or having to mow around a wire on the yard all summer. I admit I'm being petty, but I don't think I'm an ah. I mentioned it to a friend, and they went off about how everyone is struggling and that I should be a good neighbor and to stop being a spiteful ah. So? Am I the butthole? Just to add a couple things because I've gotten so many questions. Under the original deal, 10 years ago. I approached the neighbors about a year after moving in. I explained that I noticed we weren't serviceable by the cable company so I approached them to find out what had to be done. I explained that the cable company had to agree to doing the work, and that I would let them do everything on my property. The cable company required me to put a deposit of 10k down, which would be returned after we both got service to our homes. I explained they didn't have to sign or do anything to proceed, but that I just needed them to sign up for service for a month once it was done so that I could get my deposit back. I offered to pay for that, and also offered to pay for their first three months of service if they chose to permanently switch. They had zero interest in helping out. This alone has cost me $18,000 over the last 10 years. That deal no longer exists, and with rising costs of everything, I reached out the cable company again to see what we could do. They agreed to cover above and beyond their normal allowance, if I handled excavation. Construction costs were around 70k dollars. 60k of that was installing the hard line back to the ped where the services hook up. So I saved 60k by doing the work myself, and the cable company covered the remainder. Not the butthole. Your original offer was fair and would not have required anything from them. They chose not to take it, which negatively impacted you. They are now asking to inconvenience you way more than they would have been inconvenienced originally, in order to take advantage of the work you had to put in because they wouldn't originally help you. Not the butthole. If your friend is so incensed on your neighbor's behalf then they can help dig the trench or pay for the construction. You gave your neighbor a good offer the last they refused and you have every right to refuse having your property disturbed for their benefit. If your neighbor wants to dig their own trench to lay cable, they can Google how to do it with their slowpoke DSL. The friend sounds like the type of persons who will find any reason to be contrarian. 
If the neighbors were happy with their DSL up until original poster had the cables installed, how are they struggling now? They still have the same crafty internet they insisted on keeping years ago. Contrarian, what a great word. English isn't my first language thanks for teaching me this perfectly accurate word to describe my own friend let's call him G. He's a very interesting and funny guy but he's a contrarian and after 15 years of friendship, I'm sad to say I avoid him now because he'll debate anything nonsensical just for the fun of disagreeing constantly. It's so exhausting. Yeah, but. And. Actually. And a few others I won't use because my friends have found my screen name and I don't want them to know who I'm referencing. The worst is when you agree with them or try to give credit and they still find a way to argue. I started just going awkwardly silent when the culprit would start up and it kind of helped nip it in the butt. I also declared we actively not use the word actually for a while. Best month of my life. You mean nip it in the bud. As in before it blooms into a flow air slash bigger issue. Not sexual harassment. For those who aren't German, bloom means bloom. Bloom means flower, blue and is to bloom. This is also known as playing devil's advocate, and yes, completely exhausting. One word. Karma. Not the butthole. But there are some points here. Years ago, we weren't as reliant on the internet as we have become in the last year. I'm also thinking that the neighbor doesn't understand completely what was being asked or the cost involved. I didn't, and I also live in a rural area. So can someone point me to where original poster specified how years had passed? For all we know, this could have been three years ago. Furthermore, I assume the neighbors are adults. If they didn't understand, what original poster proposed, how about asking for clarification instead of refusing out of hand? How about an apology to original poster for dismissing his offer to literally upgrade their internet for free? Either way, sending an installer over to tell, not ask, original poster that they plan to rip up his yard to piggyback off the cable he installed is not the way to rectify the issue. At the very least, the neighbor needs to compensate original poster for the money and time he wasted. First sentence of the second paragraph it specified a decade. Like anyone would do something just to be contrary. Your original request was a win-win situation for them. They could have been helping neighbors, at no expense to themselves, but they decided to be Oz about it. Now they ordered your driveway torn up, without asking permission, another butthole move. I had a selfish, self-centered neighbor like that. If you are nice, they will walk over you. They didn't respect you enough to ask. Do not accommodate these people in any way. They will never be good neighbors, because of who they are. Not only was it with no expense to themselves it was to their benefit. They were basically offered three months free as a try before you buy for faster internet. If they liked it they keep it. If didn't see the point they cancel. They are now asking to inconvenience you way more than they would have been inconvenienced originally. They weren't even asking, they simply sent a contractor to rip up Op's driveway and original poster can consider himself really lucky he was home at that time in the first place. Who the F just sends a contractor onto someone else's driveway without even asking them? Even dumber is the contractor who digs up someone else's property on the say-so of someone who doesn't own the property being dug up. That's just asking for legal expenses. Virgin Media did that to my mom, she came home one day and found her drive had been dug up and repaired really poorly. They did hers because she had tarmac and her neighbor had blocked paving that would have been a pain for them to do. Then they tried to convince her to sign a retrospective easement saying that she legally had to. We had to sue them to get them to accept they were wrong. And I hope she got a brandy new paved driveway for her troubles. The contractor only asked to allow the cable to be left across the driveway until they got around to digging. There's a good chance they knew something was up as original poster hadn't mentioned the extra connection and it wasn't already in the paperwork. Doing it this way allowed him to double check then pass the problem to op, because why would they want to deal with the butthole neighbor, who could have harassed the contractor already with his demand. They weren't even asking, they simply sent a contractor to rip up op's driveway. Underrated comment here. They were going to do it anyway and didn't ask. Trying to ask for forgiveness instead of permission is kind of trashy. They knew what they were doing, and they probably had some sort of idea of Op's feelings on this. That's why they tried to circumvent him in this process. This is especially underrated because I have worked for a utility for almost 25 years. 
We get complaints about every utility because no one knows whom to call when digging has been done and gas is the first guess. These kinds of repairs are low priority for most cable companies because they are not making revenue. Happens enough that two different services cut through my electric dog fence wires three times between them over five years. No, there was no easement and every time they had come back and to pay to repair the electric fence and also dig up the line they laid and go around the property. They thought they could get away with cutting the corner, literally and if it wasn't for the electric fence wire, we probably wouldn't have ever known. Who the F just sends a contractor onto someone else's driveway without even asking them? A cable company. Worst part is I can't even guess which one original poster is talking about. I know Spectrum Wood, Comcast Wood, Cox Wood, Optimum slash Altice Wood. Honestly, aren't these all just run by the same shadowy cabal of monster billionaires and they section off into different names to give the illusion of choice? This op, please buy the book The Little Red Hen and give it to your neighbor. It's a children's book which means he should have learned this stuff as a child. Not the butthole. I always quote the little red hen. This is exactly where my mind went. This whole post reads like that kid's book about the hen who grows wheat to make bread. Nobody wants to help her sow, water, weed, or harvest, but everyone wants a bite of the bread. Not the butthole. Buy a Wi-Fi satellite, tell them you will be the internet provider for them, they can pay you $50 a month to share your internet service with you. You can set up a great Wi-Fi connection and VLAN and such with like $200 in equipment. I'd ask for at least 65% of the cost, more like 90 but I'm trying to be generous, he paid to do it this way if he does decide to agree later. What I don't understand is why he didn't just pay the original 10k. Would he have had to pay more than that if the neighbor didn't sign up, or? From what I understood. The original poster was able to get a contract that was just 10k period that he was going to pay. Not 10k per. All the neighbor had to do was sign on to their services. They only needed to keep that service for one month and could quit. Original poster was going to pay for their first three months of service as well. The neighbors literally had zero dollars to pay, unless they kept the service for more than three months. There was zero reasons for them to not take them up on it. Not the butthole. Easements lead to changes in property boundaries and all kinds of legal issues down the road. Stay firm on this. Yes, never just grant an easement. This needs to be handled by lawyers and surveyors. Especially if they're going under a driveway, if it's paved it's got to be dug up and repaved. Wow. Thanks for the awards. User Simple Za read these comments, carrot, easement could cause problems later. Oh and so not the butthole. Reddit link. Original poster replies, I'm actually well versed in utility easements. They already have one for my property because of the hard line install. They have the right to access and maintain their equipment. It's a gravel driveway, but it's about 30 inches deep, more if you include the base I put in, and they'd have to cut through heavily compacted stone and millings. I prefer it not be disturbed. Awesome. Sounds like you've got everything well in hand. Some lessons are hard to learn, for your neighbors, that's their bad. That's almost verbatim what I would tell that neighbor. Look, I tried to do this easier way years ago. Now here we are. Some of the best lessons learned in life are also the hardest. I work in escrow and easements suck. You don't want them tied any more to you than they have to. Just say no to this easement, original poster. And not the butthole. Good luck. Yeah it's a drag when they have to do that, our utility company had to dig up our driveway because of the utility lines were failing, there were shorts all over the place on our road and we kept losing power, so they had to replace the lines and it took us a good year to get our driveway back to normal just because it kept sinking where they dug. This. We have an easement on our property but luckily it says wagons only, it's old, never grant an easement without realizing you're losing slash giving up something of value. LOL one day you're going to get a wagon schooner high tailing through your property and it will be worth it. LOL so worth it. Wagons only. Love it. I can just see myself chasing after a car waving this handwritten document from the late 1800s laughing out loud. Some guy coming back from a wagon history convention, my time has come. LOL. 
I had no idea about this. Thank you for the insight. Jesus, I can imagine how easily I'd have said sure, whatever in a situation like this, because I'm so laid back. Damn. It's frustrating to me how many things can go wrong without the right info. As adults we need to know so many random things that, there is basically no way to know. Very true. Maybe this is why some folks are so uptight and paranoid. They've learned the hard way how bad life can bite you in the ass, even when you're just trying to be nice or not overthink seemingly simple things. Yes. I think that's why I have so much anxiety. If you don't do everything perfectly you might get screwed big time. It's stressful. What is an easement? It grants other people rights to your property. Like the power company has one on mine so they can get to the utility pole, but in practice it just means they need to give adequate notice if they need access, unless it was an emergency, and I can't prevent them from getting to it. You often can't fence across it, put structures on it or plant trees there because it must be accessible. Really restricts what you can do when landscaping your property. Ah, okay. Thank you. Does it last forever or are there time limits? Does it also affect if you want to build over it, can the thing that needs to be accessed moved or does it need to be included in the new build? It lasts forever and carries on with transfers of the deed. We had two that were granted to our property for access rights to the old roads. They crossed a few other neighbors' properties in different directions and had been there for over 220 years, and are still listed on all the deeds involved. Ideally, this would all be specified in a contract. It's a very bad idea to grant an easement without anything in writing. I have a friend on Vancouver Island, Canada that closes and locks the gate to the beach every year for a week to protect his right to close it permanently. He usually does it midwinter to not be a dick. But after a pissing match with the city one year, he closed it for Canada Day long weekend. It went to court and he won, because he could prove there wasn't continuous access across his land. Access laws are, interesting, and not particularly common sense. England has a right to roam law that as far as I know lets people walk across your land all they want if they don't harm anything like crops and stuff. I assume it doesn't apply to your house lot in the city. There's a skyscraper type building in New York, Old Memory, could be another similar US city, where they had to make a way for the public, one guy that took them to court, to pass through the lobby. Because he lived on one street, and for 20 plus, years he had been crossing through the vacant lot to get to his business on the other street. Colloquially known as squatter's rights, if you always could do something you eventually get the right to. I went through it with my neighbor over their driveway that was 7 feet on my land. In Ontario that right ended in the 80s, they couldn't prove 20 years of use before that date. Cost me 8k in fees to get my land back. Worth it. It's an agreement that eases access to the land. In this example, it means that the ISP has access to the land in regards to working on their equipment. Other times it's just the ability to travel through the land. Stuff like that. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.